Recently I watched videos of people playing games interactively using VR. By interactive, I mean when you walk in real life, the video game character mimics the exact same actions inside the game. Today we are going to build just that and you will be surprised to know how I use the sensors inside my smartphone to make this possible. Initially I had the idea of doing this with games like Minecraft, however modern games have so many controls, so I decided to start small. I chose a game that we have all played once in our lifetime, Super Mario, and gradually upgrade towards modern games. To be practical, Super Mario is a straightforward game with only four types of primary actions going forward going backward jumping and bending now you need to track whatever actions i perform with my body in the real world and then use ai to classify them into one of these four actions the goal is to make mario replicate these actions inside the game live with as low latency as possible this will create the effect that mario is mimicking my real world movements but the first step is to track my body movements so i had this initial idea that we could use pose estimation to track my body and here it is as you can see it is tracking various points on my body but we don't need this many points to track a single body. So what I did is I took the point from my left shoulder and right shoulder, averaged them out and now we just have a single point somewhere around here. And it is doing an incredibly amazing job of tracking me. Now we can use the data from this point to train a machine learning model to predict what kind of action I am doing out of those four. So are we done with the step one? No. Even though what I have described will work, there is a huge problem with this setup. My walking distance is constrained by the camera's field of view. As soon as I go beyond it, the tracking stops. I have to roll back and start walking again each time I go outside the frame, which is a bit disappointing. So this idea won't work out for me. We somehow had to get rid of the dependence on this camera completely. So we are back to step 1. So for more than 3 days, I just kept researching. But I was not able to find anything that would let us track without the need for a camera. I even considered giving up on this video and starting another project so I don't waste any more time until I miraculously stumbled upon this 11 year old video titled Activated Recognition Experiment Using Smartphone Sensors. In the video, you can see a guy wearing a kind of waist bag and another guy places a smartphone inside that bag, showing us this live graph. It's nothing but the data coming from the smartphone sensors. He shows how the graph is changing in different situations like sitting, laying down, walking, going downstairs and upstairs. Are you able to see how the graph is responding to each motion differently? That's because he is using accelerometer sensor which is present inside almost all the smartphones on this entire planet. Have you ever wondered how the screen rotates when you change the phone's orientation? Or how you can control a bike in a game simply by tilting your device? This is all possible because of the accelerometer sensor. So I have downloaded this app which plots the accelerometer sensor data in real time. So if I move my mobile, you can kind of see how the accelerometer sensor data is reacting to the phone's motion. So if I slide this mobile inside my pocket and start walking, you can see how the accelerometer sensor data is changing in real time. In different situations like walking, jumping or just staying still, the sensor data reacts differently, exactly like the video I showed you earlier. And we can use this data to train the machine learning model so at every point in time we can predict what kind of action I am doing to control the Mario inside the game. And unlike pose estimation where the tracking stops as soon as I leave the camera frame, here the mobile is inside my pocket so I don't have to worry. I can just walk anywhere I want and the tracking will never stop. Now we somehow had to stream this sensor data from my mobile phone to my laptop in real time. Because my mobile is just acting as a sensor but most of the heavy lifting will be done by my laptop like the main code will be run in the background here. For that I need the access to the sensor data in real time. This will be more clear as the video progresses but as of now my goal is to get this sensor data so are you able to see uh, this xyz values this to my laptop in real time. That's the goal as of now. This is where I hit the second big problem of this video. I was not able to find any app that let us stream the sensor data from my mobile phone to my laptop in real time. Like seriously, I went to the extreme depths of the internet and I was not able to find anything. So we are left with no choice. We have to create an android app ourselves. But I have never created an android app before. So it's just me and chat GPT for a few days now. It's done. 
The design of the app is kind of very basic but it works so who cares. Now let me walk you through how this app works. Step 1 involves connecting both the mobile phone and the laptop to the same internet connection to enable wireless data streaming. I have already completed this step. On the app interface you will notice two input boxes labeled host and pulled. In a computer network, each device is identified by its IP address, including my router. To find my router's IP address, I will simply open the command prompt and type ipconfig. Here you will find the router's IP address, which I will enter in the app's interface. And this port can be any available port. Let's go with 5000. However, we can't click on stream data just yet. On the other side, my laptop needs to be prepared to receive the sensor data. For this purpose, I have created a short python script that listens for the sensor data and plots it in real time. Here as well we need to enter the same host and port as on the app. I will run this file now. And you can see that it has displayed listening for incoming connections. Now we are all set to click on stream data. Here is the graph and if I move my mobile, you can see how the graph is changing in real time and if I just keep my mobile here, you can see the graph goes flat because my mobile is completely stationary now. So this graph is exactly like the app I was using previously but that app wasn't capable of streaming data to other devices which my app can do. So I will open source everything allowing you to use this app for your projects as well. Now we have the sensor data in the code so I can do anything I want with it now. There's one more fun thing you can do with an accelerometer sensor. Can you see this plane? It indicates the orientation of my phone in 3D space. So if I rotate my phone, you can see how the plane also accurately reflects where my phone is facing. This is the reason accelerometer sensor is used in games to control the bike just by the phone's motion. It uses the accelerometer sensor in the background to check the orientation of your phone and control the bike. Finally, we are at the second last step of this video where we will train the machine learning model. But first, we need to collect some data. Therefore, I have created this Python script that collects accelerometer meter sensor data and stores it in csv format i will run this script to start collecting data by walking around the room some jumping and also remaining still it's essential for our model to understand when i'm not taking any action so mario stays still which is important the only downside of this matter is that mario cannot go in reverse direction or bend since walking forward or backward is essentially the same for the accelerometer sensor including going backward would confuse the machine learning model therefore we sacrifice tracking the reverse direction for higher accuracy Similarly, we also cannot track bending. Although it's doable with some more work, I'm currently too tired to try it out. We are left with these three actions, walking, jumping and remaining still, which are the major ones in my opinion so we are not missing out significantly. Returning to the main video, after data collection, I need to label the dataset. For this purpose, I have created a streamlit app that I can easily use to label the dataset. The red part of the graph indicates the data points I am currently labeling and I have three options to choose from. I am not labeling each data point individually because that would be impractical. If I give you a single frame and ask you to determine whether I am walking or not, it's almost impossible to decide. However, if I provide you with some history, now you can confidently say yes, of course you are walking. Similarly, I am labeling a chunk of 15 data points at a time, providing enough information to our machine learning model to determine my action. After a few minutes, I successfully labeled all the data and you can see all these nice CSV files ready to be trained. The neural network consists of only three layers. The last layer is the output layer with three neurons corresponding to the three actions we have decided upon. The action predicted with the highest probability by our network is considered the final prediction. We have two hidden layers. The first one is an LSTM layer chosen because our data is time series. This is a short neural network because our data is very simple. This minimizes complexity and results in low latency. I have already trained it on our data set achieving a 95% accuracy on the training set. However, I will be more confident in this accuracy once I use this. For now, step 2 is complete. The last step involves putting everything to Together, the app, the machine learning model, and most importantly, Mario. We will use SuperMarioPlay.com as the main interface. It's a web based version of Mario, remarkably similar to the actual game. In the final script that ties everything together, we will get the accelerometer sensor data from the app, input it into the machine learning model, and get a prediction. For example, if the model predicts a jumping action, I will use Python's Pi Auto GUI library to programmatically hit the up arrow key, causing Mario to jump. This action will be repeated in a for loop, meaning it would be run repeatedly 
creating a seamless and interactive gameplay experience. It took me a few days to create the final script but it's now ready to be tested. Before revealing the final thing I would like to gently remind you to subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. It's free for you but it would mean a lot to me. Now let's take a look at the final result. So I have connected everything up. The mobile is inside my pocket and it is streaming data to my laptop and I have done a live screen share from my laptop to this mobile so i can also see the game currently the mario is still because i am not moving at all but now i will start to walk and let's see if the mario also walks with me it's walking now I will so there is a pole so the mario has stopped automatically now i will try to jump through that pole <coughs> we have jumped the pole successfully but you can see there is a very visible lag when I do the action but as this is the version 1 this type of problems will occur everything was working as expected and I was having a lot of fun I just killed that Mario was able to mimic my actions which is a huge achievement I just killed that again considering we started with nothing now we are here with a working prototype things started to go a little downhill the screen sharing connection between my laptop and my phone broke forcing me to carry the entire freaking laptop Additionally due to lag my interactive gameplay experience was not so interactive and I was losing without even starting the game. Despite these problems we have built something and in the future we can make it a lot better. Thanks for watching this video and I will be back with another exciting project soon.